Howdy everyone, I'm sorry I didn't get to give you a chapter 13 lecture notes. We had a lot of stuff going on last week here at the college and I was heavily involved in everything. So I'd like to get you a heads up on chapter 14 as well as touch on some of the things that are coming up in the class. I'm going to look at my calendar here. It looks like in 2291, which is our course, this week you guys are doing chapter 14, next week you're doing chapter 15 and exam 4. As well, the optional final will be due May 5th. While I'm thinking about it, I'm also going to write myself a note because you guys will want a chapter 4 or exam 4 review sheet. All right, so that'll lead us to what we're going to do today, which is chapter 14. Chapter 14 is all about communication and our insurance engagements. So the first thing I put down are making sure we are communicating in these insurance engagements. That's page two and three. There are many ways to communicate, and that's one of the things that you really need to hit on. There's multiple ways, but the most common ways are through memorandas, outlines, discussions, and the draft working papers. Okay, You have to continue the communications to our customer or whoever we're auditing. These are found on page two and three. Now these are a little bit more official documents, not 100% official, but a little bit more official documents. Because there are other ways to, to communicate as well, and that are interim and preliminary communications. Interim communications, basically we must communicate any observations that we have. We are seeking resolution with these communications. These are found on page 15 and 16. These include emails, face-to-face -face meetings, and conference calls. So as we're observing things to our customer, whoever we're auditing, if it's internally, what we're going to try to do here is communicate these things. Any issues that we have, we're going to try to get them resolution before our actual uh, assurance letter goes out. So we say what we're actually, how we feel about it. Which leads us to the last thing here. Positive versus negative assurance. And this is found on page 19. When we provide positive assurance, in an audit, it's the highest level of assurance and the strongest type of audit opinions from us. What we're saying here is that the controls that we've audited, the things that we've looked at, they're number one, they're designed properly, and number two, they're actually operating effectively in an organization. You could have the best designs in the world, but that doesn't mean that they're actually being followed and we're actually having them be very effective. I could say that for instance, I am going to draft the checks and the controller is going to uh, sign the checks that go out. But that doesn't mean we're actually following that procedure. And when we give a positive assurance, we're saying that we actively and effectively use the procedures that we've given. Now in a negative assurance, we're basically stating no responsibility for the audit scope and the procedures to find all issues. So what we're saying is we couldn't audit everything. We didn't find every single thing that happened. What we're saying is nothing's come to our attention that says, you know what, these, aren't, these controls aren't necessarily designed well and they're not operating effectively. Because we can't give an opinion on things that we don't know or things that we don't research. That being said, I hope you guys have a good chapter 14. Push through. We're almost done. I'm just as tired as you guys. I'm ready for the semester to end. We're close. Best of luck this week, guys.